Hello, you beautiful people. Welcome back. Welcome back. Nice to see you all again. Thank you very much for joining me. Okay, right. Let's just dive straight into it. What we're discussing today, uh, some people might find interesting. Some people might find a little bit awkward or, or not very comfortable. Uh, but it's about kind of like superstitious things, whether it's numbers and, and, and symbols or, or walking under a ladder or other other interesting aspects that you might find um, superstitious. But, but what is superstitious? What is it? Superstition is is things that 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 habits you do for for kind of like an unknown reason. So I've got some notes here that you can see, um, but but please, please don't tell me I've spelt something wrong because uh, I haven't spell checked everything and, and uh, I'm putting this up quickly just to share. It's just notes. All right. I'll let you see my notes uh, and as I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll roll down through them as we go. So these are just my notes. All right. Please don't uh, get too upset if I share my notes with you and you spot a spelling mistake. Oh, an English teacher with a spelling mistake. Dare I be human? I am a human. You know, I check it once or twice, but I haven't paid for somebody else to come in and check it again. All right. Just because I'm an English teacher, it doesn't mean I'm perfect with every aspect and, and my entire life of, of writing and typing and texting. All right. I am a human. I make errors much as we all do, much as we all do. Right. Let's not digress. Let's get back on track and look at what we're talking about today. All right. So I don't want to call it superstition. I want to just say it's interesting things from different cultures around the world. You know, uh, a lot of us have traveled and, and we see something in another country. and we're Wow, that's a bit unusual. What, 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 what does that mean in, in your country? What's the context? What, what's the story behind it? Why, why do you do that? If somebody came here and they say uh, they, they would see me go, oh, yeah, touch wood, touch wood. We have an expression meaning touch wood, like for luck. And nobody knows why we do it, really. Nobody knows why. But it's just one of those silly, unusual cultural things. All right. But but so many people do it. And in different parts of the country, the UK, we have different traditions or tra different expressions of luck or, or, or things we do or superstitions. So going back to superstitions is kind of like a fear of the unknown, that a fear of a God from from way back before, you know, um, before we believed in sort of modern day religion. We had this superstition that this luck or that luck or bad luck for this and bad luck for that. And, and these gods that, that um, we don't know a lot about anymore so that's that's where superstition from from my understanding comes from all right so you may have heard of some of these before you may not you know please put in the comments what your thoughts are and what bizarre unusual or even normal superstitions you have in your country let, let me know in the comments i'd be really interested to know I, I find it fascinating really really fascinating and intriguing to to see inside the mind of people from another culture really uh, enthralls me, makes me excited and happy. All right, let's just jump on it now. Right. OK. Numbers at the moment, numbers and symbols across cultures and perspectives. That's that's the notes I got. Right. OK. Number. So number seven, number seven, one of the um, earliest instances dates back to Mesopotamia. All right. Um, Siberians, the type of people. Uh, like this number seven so much with divine significance, you know, like like God loves this number. This is God's number. And I think that's where we get like seven days of the week. And in, in the UK, the, the, the Bible sort of said that, you know, on the seventh day, God rested and things like that. So, yeah, it is uh, it's supposed to be a good number or an important number. Seven days of the week. I don't know a huge amount about it. Um, also in uh, the narrative underscores the sacredness of seven. Uh, yeah, the creation of spanning seven days. Yeah. All right. Uh, the the Quran, 
the Holy Book of Islam further further um, uh, embodies this number seven uh, with bear with me if I if I say this wrong I apologize Surah Al Fahith the opening chapter consists of seven verses so the repetition of seven in um, context in uh, within the Quran also sort of signifies its importance with religious reasons and religious beliefs and ideology so seven is what seems to be a religious number a religious number number seven interesting uh we will get on in a moment to some other numbers but i think i remember number four uh in asia and specifically china number four is, is significant if you know what number four means in in uh, in uh, asian culture let me know in the comments let me know in the comments i'd, li I'd like to know all right, mixing it around a little bit, we got horseshoe. If you don't know what a horseshoe is, it's um, iron or metal goes all the way around what would be the foot or the shoe or the toe of the horse. And it's, you know, it's really, really thick and strong and hard. So it doesn't hurt the horse. But they put this metal ring around it that was made in the forges. I, I guess that's why a blacksmith was... Um, was necessitated was needed to to put these metal shoes on the horses you know for romans and and, and going back even further apparently uh, well this is just my perspective the shoes metal shoes allowed the horses hooves and feet to go on these man-made cobbled roads so that their feet would last longer a bit, a bit like a dog i suppose or or a rabbit where you'd have to or or other animals that you'd have to trim their nails you know you'd have to cut them down a little bit uh so they don't cause pain or they don't grow too much because they're domesticated because we use them if they were in nature and they were doing their own thing then um i, I guess they would be allowed to scrape them down themselves or you know it, it wouldn't be a problem but because us humans use animals and domesticate animals we have to look after their health uh, and so their nails grow naturally extra long. I think that's where the idea of shoes for the for the horses came from. <clears throat> All right. So uh, originated in ancient Greece and Rome, the horseshoes association with luck stems from the belief that in the protective qualities of the iron. All right. Going back to what I said with the um, blacksmiths. You know, forging things in in the fire, whether it's swords or or shoes for the horses. All right, so the iron has got some really good qualities. We have iron in our bodies as well, actual actual real metal iron in our bodies in our blood. So iron is really perceived to be a big thing. You know, uh, as as part of these theologies go and and beliefs, and also the the uh, the core of the earth is obviously made of molten iron so it's not melted iron all right so we've got deep roots with with iron um all right so they also use the word talismans all right so talismans that's an interesting word um i don't know how i've described the word talisman is is like a, a token it's like a, an object that that we perceive to have importance you know, so to ward off evil spirits or give to the man. So so back in the old days as well, uh, I used to give a coin uh, either on the eyes or in the palm to to uh, a person that died so that when they go on the boat across the river or across the ocean uh, to the next life, the ferryman crossed the palm of the ferryman's hand with silver to enable and ensure a good passage. Now, it obviously seems quite silly to think that you give some coins to a dead person so they can use that as currency for the person that's um, piloting the boat across to another place. Obviously, is a, is a bizarre concept, but we we still see it now, even in films like um, Harry Potter uh, and, and other films. People give dead bodies coins all right so it's really prevalent in in our culture so yeah it goes back to medieval time so then they put a horseshoe 
and, and it has to be facing up to catch the good luck. Why, why good luck is falling from the sky, I don't know. Into its horseshoe, all right? Apparently it's bad luck if you've got it upside down. So so we've got this horseshoe. You'll, you'll see it a lot, actually, in, in the UK, often on narrow boats um, or other places where there may be in um, history of horses and like Shire horses, which were the really big, muscular, strong horse that would carry, uh, well, well, carry loads and pull loads. So not only did we use Shire horses for um, pulling boats along the canal, canal boats, and but we'd also use them all over the, the um, all over the country in, in different industries. The same as in Europe. We would use them for logging, you know, pulling out logs out of the forest um, and, and probably even plowing and, and, and transport, you know, like everywhere else. So, yeah, um, horseshoes, quite an interesting, an interesting piece of metal. Uh, yeah, uh, again, to safeguard against malevolent forces. Now, I didn't know this word, uh, maleficence and malevolent until recently. I'm not that keen on the word malevolence. I, I hear it from students occasionally. OK. Um, symbol of protection for inhabitants and uh, superstitions facing up with yesterday. All right. OK. Um, but in China, it's considered a symbol of protection and good fortune. Hmm. OK. All right. Moving on. Now, what about so in uh, another one we have is ladybirds. Or as they say in America, ladybugs, ladybugs. Um, now, ladybirds are a really small insect, all right? And and they're, they're, they're almost like a, a half half circle shape on the top, all right? So they're, they're, they're sort of curved. And then they're, they're quite strikingly red with black dots on. I don't know what the significance of the dots are. I, I think it has some significance. But... It's two halves, and then that is actually part, it's, all, it's almost like a shell. That is actually part of their wings, and it opens up and allows them to fly. Anyway, the importance of the ladybird is that it eats other small insects and bugs that can destroy farmers' crops. All right, so the, the ladybird or ladybug has always been revered, has always been liked and, 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 and wanted and, and brought to, to, to the UK because it kills other bugs that, that uh, destroy the crops, that eat the crops. Probably not as much as like locusts or anything like that. But that's another thing. Uh, so it's always called, even back from medieval time, and folklore, ladybirds. There's even a little song, ladybird, ladybird, fly away home. I don't know. I can't remember the rest. I don't think it's very good. I think it's something about your house burning down, but oh, I don't know. <laughs> ladybirds, poor ladybird. All right. Why, and why is a lady and not a male? But I don't know. All right. Um, yeah, so looking after crops, stuff like that. Okay. All right. What about rainbows? You know, rainbows. Uh, it says here, like, a right um, arching across the sky, a spectrum of colours, cap captivated human uh, and fascination for centuries. Irish folklore um, would have said there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Now, I don't know how much you've seen of animations and, and um, uh, I don't know, small people. So the Irish often have... Um, a pixie, they call it a pixie, uh, and there's a lot of uh, there's a few other characters that go along with the Irish when when people are visualising them or talking about them. Normally, a little Irish leprechaun. That's the word. Sorry, sorry. Yes, there's pixies, but also leprechaun. That's that's the main character. If you type in leprechaun, you'll see the like a like a small human, um, often wearing a lot of green. Now, it's said that these are cheeky little creatures uh, and they keep hold of gold. They love to have gold. And so they say at the end of this rainbow, you'll find a leprechaun hiding and holding on to the gold. Quite an, uh, an interesting little story. There's there's a, an interesting film about leprechauns and, and, and um, fairies at the bottom of the garden. What film was that? Uh, 
And I think it's to do a Eurovision Song Contest. So if you type in Eurovision Song Contest and Leprechauns and I think it's Will Will Ferrell, uh, you, you'll see it. I can't remember the name of the film. Really, really crazy and funny film. It's so, so hilarious. All right. Leprechauns, Pot of Gold, Rainbow. Now, other people think that a rainbow sort of joins the spiritual world across to the real world. And obviously there's there's a bit of scientific um, data and information about the, the oils in the ground that get wet. Uh, and then how, how it's the, the, the sunlight that, that's coming through um, reflects on that and is a prism of, of light, I guess. So you, you might know more about it than I do. So feel free to mention in the comments about the rainbow. But uh, it's, it's kind of been hijacked in recent years by other groups. Okay, number 13. Now, forgive me if I say this wrong. Triska Kapophia. Triska Kapophia. The fear of number 13. In Christianity, the Last Supper is often cited as the original fear of the number 13. Because if you've seen a painting of the Last Supper, apparently there's like 12 people or 12 disciples and then there's one that's missing or one that's been like evaded or, or, or painted out or disappeared um, and that's supposed to represent uh, the, the negative and the bad side of of the Last Supper of this 13th person um, yeah with Judas is uh, or Judas being taken out of the picture he would have been the 13th guest uh, but that's in contrast to North, North mythology, where the number 13 represents um, completeness and tradition, as there are 12 major gods with the additional of the mischievous Loki. Now, that's not a, a mention of a Marvel film or a Marvel TV show, but Loki is a, a, an interesting character, if you like the Marvel films, uh, Thor. I do. I find them uh, a lot of fun. I enjoy them a lot. OK, so now you you may know this. I mean, if you're in Europe, you may know this, but often we'll have elevators with number 13 missing or a block of houses or a block of flats with number 13 missing. Now, I'm a very logical and stoic kind of person. And so I'm I'm confused as to why. People remove it from from uh, from the number of houses or the number of floors on an elevator because it just doesn't make sense. You know, it's logical. It's just a number like everything else. You know, I, I'm confused by it. But there we go. There we go. It is missing from many elevators and block of flats and lots of other places. It's missing from because of the superstition. Ooh, number 13 is going to get you. Ugh. People, eh? People are crazy and bizarre and unusual and fascinating all together in one. Okay, broken mirrors. Now, this did upset me when I was younger that I was told by my my uh, mother that if you break a mirror, uh, that's seven years, seven years bad luck. Now, that's a long time for a small boy to be scared about breaking a mirror. Now, I don't know whether it's about it's it's made of glass and you should be careful with it. You know, a bit like when you've got to do the dishes as a child. You know, you're you're washing up and then you, you drop a plate and you get shouted at for smashing a plate accidentally. All right, whether it's to do with that and breaking something that's valuable uh, for, from, I don't know, modern cultural uh, perspective. But it has a lot of roots going back again to Roman times and, and other mythologies, even further back. Uh, so it's got a lot of superstitions because they say the mirror is the eyes to the soul and, you know, you're trapped within the mirror, your reflection and blah, 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 blah. So there's a lot of um, ideology and, and superstition shrouded around the mirror. I mean, just look at what was it? Um, Snow White. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? <gasps> Snow White. So there you go. And that's Disney. Uh, Disney film. Right, okay. Um, yeah, seven years of bad luck. Right. Black cats. They're, uh, they're often revered in folklore. 
Um, so in the, in the UK, it's considered bad luck to have a, a black cat go across your path. So if you're walking this way and a cat goes across, <gasps> it's bad luck. Something bad is going to happen. Now, apparently, I think it's connected to the fact that um, witches used to always have cats. Now, there's a lot of information now to state that many people, sorry, many women were considered witches. And I think that stems from a lot of disease and people dying back in the time of the plague and things like that. So a lot of diseases were carried by rats. Now, if you were a single woman and you had rats, sorry, if you were a single woman and you had cats, that would often keep the rats away. Hence, people that lived with women and cats were less likely to die. And so the narrow mindedness of the men and the people back in the 18th and 19th century, when there was plagues of diseases from the rats, didn't didn't connect the dots and, and realize that the rats were bringing the disease. They just thought, ah, oh, these women aren't dying. They must be supernatural. They must be evil in, in collude with the devil. You know, so the, the, the men thought that these women were evil because they were surviving when when other people uh, and other women and other families were, were dying all around them. So that's where the idea of the uh, some of the ideas of a witch came. And hence, a witch has often got a black cat with her. Ah, it's all starting to make sense to me now. Interesting, huh? Interesting black cat. Right. But opposite to that, opposite to that. Um, ancient Egyptians loved cats. And the cats were very, very revered. There's that word again. Revered. Loved. Adored. Adorned. Because, probably, because they looked after the crops. You know, if you've got lots and lots of grain stored in a barn or, or um, I don't know, other creatures trying to steal your food. If you had a cat that looked after your food, then, you know, you're going to survive longer. We, we also use cats on, on ships and things like that as well to stop the mice. But yeah, cats have been, that, I think that's why we domesticated cats and why people love cats so much. Because they naturally are predators against other creatures that are trying to steal the food. I'm not going to say our food because it's just food. So yeah, black cats. Some say bad, some say good. Mm. Where do you sit on the fence? huh? Do you love black cats? Do you, are you scared of black cats? Are you superstitious? Which is it? Oh. For black cats? Against black cats? The debate continues. So here it said, um, again, I believe to be witches, omens of misfortune. Omens of misfortune. That's interesting. All right. Uh, witches on their unholy gatherings. Ooh. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, now, this one's a bit different. I was, I was a bit perplexed, perplexed, confused by this one. The taboo of whistling, whistling, uh, in some traditions believed to attract snakes and evil spirits. Now, how's a whistle going to attract a snake? More often than not, we use it to attract a dog. Hey, boy. But, but not snakes. And as far as I'm aware, snakes feel, because they're touching the ground, feel vibrations. Hmm. And I think vibrations generally scare away snakes. I don't know if you've seen that episode of The Simpsons with the snakes and the snake beating and, and things like that and scaring them away. Anyway, if you like snakes, there's a really ridiculous film called Snakes on the Plane with Samuel L. Jackson. I mean, right? he's a cool actor. What's he doing in a silly film called Snakes on the Plane? <laughs> All right. OK, snakes. So whistling. <whistles> Is whistling different in different countries? Now, I think they use it in the mountains for a part of yodeling. 
I mean, uh, you guys heard of yodeling? Now, forgive me if I get this really badly wrong, but I've seen the films. And he's a yodeling, yodeling, yodeling. <laughs> now, now, apparently that's, that's purposely designed to make that sound for the for bouncing around on their hills and to be able to relay messages through long distances around the valleys. Now, that also might be a coincidence of why they say the people in Wales, uh, Welsh people in the UK, we've got, you know, we've got England and Scotland and Ireland, but we also got Welsh. The Welsh people are really, really good at singing. They've got lots and lots of choirs and it's quite a tradition. And, and we all know that the Welsh people, especially the Welsh men, are very good at singing. Now, is that to do with some traditions of uh, their, their humming and whistling and singing down through the valleys to allow the, the, the hills to reverberate, reverberate their, um, their words and their songs? Hmm, interesting, interesting. All right, okay. So the next one we've got here is umbrellas. Now, umbrellas, now in the UK especially, are considered to be very bad luck to open an umbrella inside the house. I mean, the, the fact that it's quite big and it pops up, you know, and you could probably hit somebody with it uh, accidentally or knock over something and break something is, is one aspect. But actually, to be bad luck is very, very odd and bizarre. And anyway, as far as I know, it goes back to ancient uh, Egyptian and Roman times with the, uh, the belief that it was considered sacred because it's offering to help shield you from the sun. So like a parasol, I guess. Um, and it's believed to bring bad luck. Uh, and it's just kept going all the way down through there. I, I, I don't see how. I mean, most of these most of these superstitions here are not logical or make sense. And and obviously that's because the people that started and instigated and perpetuated these silly superstitions were probably men, but, but were um, uneducated. And, and so they could only guess that a correlation between having... Uh, having doing X and then something bad happening, they correlate and put the two things together. So somebody must have opened up an umbrella or a parasol indoors and then they got bad luck. Hence, they connected the two things together. And there we go. It, it's perpetuated from there. All right. So umbrellas, bad luck to have in the house and to put up. Hmm. Odd. All right. Okay. Uh, what about the anchor? I apologize for say this wrong. The anchor. All right. So it's like a cross, but it's got a round bit on the top of the head. Sometimes it's used in Christianity. So according to this, uh, it goes back to ancient Egypt. Uh, it's a symbol resembling a cross with the loop at the top. It symbolizes life, immortality, and the union of male and female principles. Um associated with gods and pharaohs in Egyptian mythology. Uh, its longevity has continued throughout the ages, making its significance. It's also in jewellery. So yeah, lots and lots of people like this cross with the loop on the top. Hmm. I don't know. Not very exciting. Not very interesting to me. A loop on top of it. I don't know. I think it's just a funky cross. A funky cross. But yeah, I see it in jewellery occasionally. I think I've, I don't know, I think I've seen something similar with a, a druid, a druid and pagan. They have like a cross, but they have like a, a circle in the middle. Hmm. Okay. Um, right. Now, now we're going to get a little bit controversial. I'm not going to show images because it's a bit controversial. The next one is the swastika. Swastika. Now, the, now I know this already, that the symbol of, is like a cross. But then with an arm coming up and then out, I think it is like that, like this, up and out. And lots of people recognize it now as the swastika from Nazi Germany. And Nazis used it as their symbol for, for 
propagating their 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 narrative uh, and their propaganda. But actually, it goes back to Hinduism and Buddhism and Judaism. So it goes back a long, long way before before um, Nazi Germany. Now it's interesting again how a specific symbol can be hijacked by um, a, 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 a different group of people in a different time. Like, I don't know, maybe like the, the sign of the McDonald's sign, the golden arches, you know, that may well have been something much more deity and godlike and religious thousands of years ago. But now we all know it as McDonald's, which is almost like a religion as it is. So symbols. Uh, the cross. The cross has been around for millennia and, you know, dates back a long, long way. And lots of other simple, simple signs and, and symbolic images that are easy to draw and to replicate have meant different things in different times to different cultures. So, yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah. All right. OK. Um... So yeah, about the uh, swastika. Bit of a shame that one's got a lot of negative connotations. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. Now, I think it was lucky bamboo. So originally native to West Africa. Now, who would imagine, right? Bamboo comes from Africa. You know, it's really, really hot there, isn't it? So I imagine bamboo as Asia, as the East. Huh. All right, Africa. Uh, it made its way to China where it come emblem, emblem of good fortune, positive energy, despite its name. Lucky bamboo isn't a true bamboo. So lucky bamboo isn't even real bamboo. Uh, reminds me of a song. The old bamboo, the old bamboo, nothing wrong with the old bamboo. Want, again, that goes back to Dick Van Dyke that I mentioned in another film, uh, Mary Poppins. Okay, bamboo. We digress. Um, isn't true bamboo is rather a member of the Drac Draconemia family, which is associated with lux from unique characteristics. Uh, it's because it thrives in low light and is very, very flexible, symbolizing resilience and adaptability. Now, <laughs> you could say that about many things. You could say, oh, plastic. Plastic is durable and recyclable and long-lasting. Ooh, let's revere plastic. Wow. Just goes to show how, how uneducated and, and, and narrow-minded people were back hundreds and thousands of years ago, which obviously, you know, is understandable. This is ev evolution. So it just begs the question. No, uh, no, I'll tell you what, I'll bring that question to the end. I'll use that question at the end. Okay, right. Um, Chinese fortune, number of bamboo stalks carries significant meaning. So if the stalks, if there's lots of different stalks coming off the bamboo, like two is really good. Five stalks represents traditional Chinese elements, fostering balance and harmony because there's five stalks and not three. Oh, wow, interesting, how huh? interesting how naive we were back then, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago even. Okay, uh, tradition of considering coins as lucky. So in the UK, often we'll throw coins into a fountain. Sometimes, like you go to a garden centre, something like that, and there'll be a pretend fountain. It's not even real. There might be water in the bottom, and it might be like a, uh, a circle of bricks up sort of, I don't know, two or three feet high, and then like, like a couple of beams going up with a little roof on it. And often now, right, if it is a real one, there'll often be a metal grate over the top so you can see the water down below and all the coins in there. And there'll be a grate to stop people trying to steal the coins. You know, desperate times, desperate. Or is it to stop children from falling in? I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you, you go to, like, maybe a park and you'll see a water fountain with lots of coins in it. And then little children go, oh, look, mummy, here's some money. I've got some coins. Yay. <laughs> And then you got to stop the children from what's known as stealing all the coins, I guess. But yeah, we've always been known for throwing coins in. Uh, and again, they say this stems back from ancient practicing 
practices offering metallic objects as gifts to deities. This belief transcends the cultural boundaries, such as throwing coins into a fountain for a good luck. The act of casting coins into the water, bodies of water, uh, like Trevi Fountain in Rome, has roots in ancient offerings to water deities, or well, we already said that, symbolizing a desire for uh, fortune and abundance. Oh, okay. Uh, in Chinese culture, the concept of lucky coins is prevalent, with the ancient coins featuring auspicious symbols like dragons and phoenix. These coins are often used in feng shui uh, practices to attract positive energy and wealth. There we go. Now, in the UK, uh, I'm, I'm probably in America, I think in America as well, there's a really big, um, I wouldn't say it's industry, but I would definitely say a big hobby is to collect coins, specifically older coins that, that may have the wrong date stamped on it or, or a limited number. So not only, not only can you collect stamps, because stamps have been around for quite a while, uh, and people get really interested and fascinated with the history behind it, but you can collect coins. Now, there's some. If you look on YouTube, some amazing coins, like like having a tiny sword coming out. You know, the Knights Templar and things like that. That again, Knights Templar and King Arthur, old traditions and stories from way back uh, regarding um, England. So yeah, some fascinating coins uh, in them on the market that you can see on YouTube. So the idea of collecting coins and collecting stamps is actually a bit like collecting art in that it holds value and, and it can go up in value over the years and over the decades. So although it is frowned upon a little bit by modern society as being a bit geeky and a bit nerdy, a bit bit odd. But anyway, people that have these things are uh, very good at collecting. And then obviously when it gets passed down to family generations, by that point, it's normally worth quite a bit of money. So on one hand, you might mock and tease somebody that has a stamp and coin collection. But on the other hand, you're like, well, that's probably worth a lot of money now. I wouldn't mind that. Hmm. OK, uh, feng shui, feng shui. That's an interesting concept as well. Feng shui. We could talk about that another day. All right. Uh, if you practice feng shui uh, or you know a lot about it, mention it down in the comments. I'd be interested to know. It's quite an interesting and fascinating idea. Feng shui. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. All right. Um, <laughs> I, I can believe this one when I read it. Chinese culture um, uh, revered crickets. So it's a symbol of good luck. They keep them as pe pets and the melodic chirping. Creak, 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 creak. Oh, my goodness. Right. Let me tell you a story. When I was um, in Asia, again, I'm always going on about Asia, right? But I was there for two years, so I'm a, I'm a, and it wasn't that long ago. It was only like six months ago. So I think I'm allowed to say it, all right? <laughs> when I was in Asia um, and I had a downstairs apartment, you'd often get insects coming up through different places. Now, the one insect that I really, really had a problem with was these crickets. I, I don't think they were real crickets. I think they were like, they were more like cockroaches. Anyway, they made the noise of crickets. Now, in the UK, we see crickets as like a grasshopper, as like one of these little tiny little things that jump, right? And it's green and it's got big legs and it's got these antennas. But the crickets or the things that look that sounded like crickets in Asia, where I was, uh, looked more like a small cockroach. Now, that they kept coming in because they like damp wood. Now, in Asia, uh, a, a lot, well, in, in Cambodia, a lot of the wood in the house was big solid proper real wood um furniture and doors Un unlike here the door behind me is like cardboard you could punch a hole right through it the doors in the uk the modern cheap doors that you see behind me are terrible they're rubbish anyway but the doors in in uh cambodia and asia that, that i saw were like really strong and would last decades a long time but they also used it in the shower, so eventually it gets a little bit damp, and apparently that's the smell and, and flavour or whatever that draws in these, these tiny, tiny little things that were like cockroaches, but they made the noise of a cricket. 
Anyway, my bedroom was very near the bathroom where if I ran in and put the light on, I could see them scurrying away. Anyway, these things, oh my God, they made this incessant noise, this cricket noise all night. As soon as it dark from like, um, I don't know, like, yeah, as soon as it's dark and quiet. So obviously if I had the TV on or whatever, I didn't have TV, but you know, if I had music on or whatever, so sort of like I go to bed, maybe like 10 o'clock at night, half past 10, I could hear it. Creak, creak. Creak, creak, creak. And, and it would be, and I'd be looking around the room for it, finding it, going mad. I'm going insane trying to find this noise. Oh. In the end, I had to get my phone and put on put on some YouTube with white noise. It's, it's a bit like crackling, like on an old TV. And really put the, the volume up. It's called white noise because it drowns out all the other sounds on the, the frequency waves. You can actually get pink pink noise, brown noise, um, and all other different types of like beta waves to help you sleep. But anyway, white noise knocks out all the other sounds. So so that's why I had white noise had it up near my head quite close to drown out the sound of these crickets. I did eventually get rid of them. That's another story. Yes, so that was my time in Asia. Right, all right. Crickets, okay, where are we? Um, dream catchers. Now, originally from North, um, sorry, Native American cultures have a rich story entwined with spirituality. I don't know if you've seen uh, dream catchers. They're like a big circle and, and they've normally got strings or, or wool going across. And we make them here sometimes uh, for children. And so they've got these strings all over this loop, this, this circle. Uh, and then off the bottom of that, you hang feathers and things like that. And you hang it up maybe in a tree or, or in your bedroom or whatever. So it's called a dream catcher, often made out of um, twigs and twine or other, you know, natural stuff. Uh, and it's supposed to catch, it's supposed to filter, I guess, the, the bad dreams. Um, and what else is it? Symbolize breath and the universal flow. So breath and universal flow is the feathers and the, the, the filter out the bad dreams is the strings across the circle. All right, okay. So yeah, that, that's just a handful, all right? We, we do have quite a few others, like walking under a ladder is considered bad luck. Now, it would be if something fell on you, but I believe being under the ladder, if something falls, it's going to land on the ladder. So going under it is safer than going around it, where if it hits the ladder, it's going to hit you, bounce and hit you. Anyway, I, I, I don't mind walking under a ladder. So yeah, we've got lots and lots of other ones, like I said before, like, like touch wood, knock on wood, things like that. But my question is to you, my question is to you, if, if you and I see these superstitions as silly and naive and childish and immature and stupid, what things do we do now that people in a hundred years time will say is, oh, those people in 2023, they were, oh my God, they were so stupid. They were uneducated. They didn't know what we know now. Those people in 2023, oh my goodness, they, they used to adore this and adore that and love this and love that. Oh, those people from 2023, oh, so silly. <laughs> Glad I'm not there now. What things do we do now? that are going to be going to be considered stupid and 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 naive and pathetic in the future let me know in the comments what you think let me know what you think what do you do now that that's crazy that somebody in 10 years time 100 years time is going to think is crazy be interested to know and so if you have any superstitions in your country let me know. Uh, I want to know. Uh, I find it fascinating and intriguing. You know, it's, it's like a, a peek behind the door of another culture, you know, another country. I find it very, very fascinating. It's, uh, it's definitely interesting to, to, to get to know other people and other cultures. So, yeah, I'd be really interested to know and find out. Let me know uh, in the comments. Um, and if there's anything I've said that you thought was uh, new or different or unusual or bizarre again let me know in the comments all right that's it for this week and i'll see you in the next one take care and i'll see you soon oh and if you get a moment hit that like and subscribe button it really does help i'd really appreciate that i'll give you lots of hugs and kisses 
that like and subscribe button really makes it a bit better for me. You know, tells the algorithm, the audience, whatever, that I'm worth listening to. So please do, please, please, please hit that like and subscribe button. All right, see you in the next one. Take care for now. Bye-bye.